version control. Their style is, kind of, is to use a website for notes as opposed to the cheat sheet or a, um, like a PDF notes. So from this website, which is for the whole workshop series, it would be somewhat important to go to, to know how to go to this to find the notes. Scroll down, workshop website. Okay. So it sounds like everyone workshop website. So it sounds like everyone has been installed. Um, the point of Git and software like it is to have something to manage various versions of your software. Um, in particular, that they're general enough to work with any kind of data. Um, as an example, a little story that these notes will go through, you have Wolfman and Dracula are designing a mission to go to some other planet, um, maybe with some monster friends, and they want to keep notes of wh which planets and which moons are good, but they've had a lot of bad experience. One person writes a note, sends it to another, goes back and forth, different versions get different things get lost in between. It's kind of a mess to collaboration. And this applies not just for a fictitious example like that, but um, here in real, uh, in, in actual collaboration. It can be a little um, messy trying to keep in get your co-authors and collaborators comments and um, revisions to your work. Keep that, all that straight. So a version control system, or version control software, manages this. So I would like to ask, who here has used some kind of system for managing different revisions of the work? What would you have used? So that is, is only built into Visual Studio, so I don't have to use Oh, you, you were building the Git, you were using Git? Okay. Yeah, the, the form of Git that was already pre-built into Visual Studio. Okay. So, that's good. Uh, obviously, I'm supportive of that, given this workshop. Um, one that's probably more common that probably, the answer is probably everyone has. I'm going to go to the first one um, for the topics and show this little comic. Well, okay. show this comic for what I mean that probably everyone has some kind of system for managing different uh, versions of the work. Um, and it can be a little irritating. <laughs> Not just all the red marks, but all the like. Saving copies so that you don't lose any of the earlier work, making sure that um, you're just working on something newer in case you realize, oh, what I've been typing for the last half hour, that was horrible. It's better to, to have just forgotten about all that. Um, and people do this and they fill up their desktop with, the, with dozens or hundreds of icons or God knows how many because their desktop is filled up. Um, so let's do things a better way. Well, I'm seeing what you do. <laughs> I don't know if your desktop's like this. Maybe you've seen that. <laughs> my, my advisor's desktop may or may not be like this. But I mean, it happens. You, you don't want to lose. You don't want to lose things when you incorporate other people's changes, and you don't. And you feel a little. When you feel a little uneasy about the changes you're making, it's a very powerful thing to be able to go back, <coughs> even though. When you're working on final revision 22, comments 49, corrections 10, and then you're swearing at your computer, you probably don't care about the earlier versions. So it's nice just to see the newest one and be able to go back. So Git is one such software to allow you to do that. Um, for that, 
you can think of documents as going through snapshots and you're able to see previous snapshots if you need to. You can do a lot more. You can think of um, taking one snapshot and having other people do work on it. So you do it. You have a version that came from some previous one, and someone else has another version that came from a previous one. You can do independent side-by-side -side development. What makes Git a powerful software and, and very useful software, and we'll talk about this on Thursday more, is the ability to combine people's changes together. Uh, so it's used, this was developed for the Linux kernel, which is a massively um, collaborative effort. Hundreds, thousands of people um, contribute to this regularly. But even if you don't, have that kind of um, work. Being able to do this kind of steps is much better than doing these steps. So, so going back to this um, to the page for the workshop, I'm gonna go to topic two, setting up kits. Since everyone has git install, hopefully you're able to run run the command git, or one of the first things when there's a new command that's useful is to run man in the command, see the help for it. The person who wrote this, Lance Truffle, or the person who originally created it, the creator of Linux, um, has a bit of a aggressive sense of humor. Uh, so the stupid contract, content tracker, because it tries to be somewhat simple, despite how powerful it is. Uh, so there's a description. One of the and one thing I want to point out: it goes git. Some things that you don't have to do are optional, and a command. And one of the first options that it says you can use is dash dash help. This is actually kind of nice. If I type that and scroll up, it gives you some of the commands you can type in. We're going to cover some of these. I don't know all of these. Or I've never, I haven't used all of these. Um, some of them are quite useful. Actually, most of them. Uh, mo most of them are useful to use re using regularly. Um, but if you ever need help, git dash dash help, and then one of these commands will allow you to see that. So that's a good thing. If what I'm saying is confusing, you can also look for another description to help. Which may be even more confusing, but at least it's something else. Um, and there's been a lot of work to try to make this more user friendly. So. I'm going to follow steps that are in the notes. And the first thing is to use git config, which is a command to basically change things about how um, of just, just configuration for git. Since we're working on, uh, we're going to be working on some text files for planning the space mission, it's important that git actually knows who we are so that when we to other people, you can tell the difference. It knows that you edited a line and not someone else when you're comparing them. Um, so the first two, the first two lines here, just type in your name and your email, and otherwise you can copy paste. So. If I do this, git config global user dot name, I would do Joseph Booker. Whatever name you guys have, hopefully it's not mine. <coughs> git config global user dot email is useful.
And now this is just because this looks nice. Well, tell uh, Git to always be colorful. There's a bunch of other. Um, there's a choice of options in the table on the notes for what you can set for your text editor. I'm not sure what Git does by default on different platforms. So for instance, I don't know what it'll do on Windows and Macs. On Linux, I have a suspicion what it will do, and it'll depend on your distribution. So you might end up in a text editor that you have no idea how to use. So it's kind of nice to set this. Um, on my computer, I would do this as Vim. If you don't have a favorite text editor, I would suggest Nano. So. For Nano, uh, for Nano, it stops Nano from um, stops Nano from breaking lines that shouldn't be broken, which it may not, which is kind of stupid for it to do. So yeah, you probably don't need it unless you run into that case where Nano does something stupid. So it has an automatic word wrap, and that's what slash the dash w disables. And you can see what Git knows or how Git is set up by just uh, listen configuration. And hopefully this should say your name, email. Is everyone set up? Okay. Good. So when you make, when you keep track of your, um, keep track of the history of your files, now Git will know who to blame for uh, any changes. So. Going back to this website, finish this, can go on to create a repository. So from here, I'm going to pretend, well, how about this? Instead of pretending I'm me, I'll pretend to be dry. I'll pretend to be Dracula. Don't know his last name. So I'm going to start this list of, plan a list of um, notes for where to send for the space mission. Um, there's a lot of places in the solar system. Um, if you're familiar with the Kerbal Space Program, this is kind of a fun activity, interplanetary travel, very patient. You have to be, but so I'll start making this project. I'll make a directory for it. CD into that. Nothing in there yet, and I'll do my work. So this could be making your um, making your notes for planets, making your. Uh, Starting your thesis, starting a research document, um, or starting some code for your research, whatever you, however you're going to start this. Although, actually, sorry, I just realized for the notes, we start with making this a repository while it's empty. So, to make this folder controlled by git. Git in it creates the repository. Very simple command, you usually won't use any arguments for it. And it gives you a little hint what it did. It made a dot git folder inside of the folder you ran it in. Path would probably be different. Unless your username is also Joe. We can see that it doesn't create any regular files because ls still doesn't show anything ls-a, which shows hidden files and folders in this case, shows the .git created something. So that's all you need to create to make a folder a git repository. 
repository means that this is what you're using Git to keep track of. Now, one of the most useful, probably one of the most common things to run with Git is Git status. Git status tells you um, the status of the files, which I'll tell you about later, as well as any issues with your repository. So if I type it, the branch I'll talk about on Thursday, it tells us that we're on the first um, commit. We haven't made any kind of snapshots or any kind of um, save the states, so to speak. And we also have told it nothing to save. So this is good. It's empty. It knows it's empty. We'll fill this up with stuff. Now, Going onward, let's actually make some changes. Let's create a file and start the notes. So I am pretending I am Dracula. I'm going to use Nano. And so I'm not using slash w because I know I'm not going to have really long lines. Um, but, yeah. So, this is Mars, and Dracula. I like places that remind me of a cemetery or a coffin, old coffin. Ah. And I like the color of blood. So, this is my note time. I'm going to save the file in nano. You can exit with Control X. And it asks you if you want to save. If you're using Emacs or Vim or whatever else, um, hopefully you know how to save. Save and quit. So, does everyone have the Mars.txt file created? Okay. So if we go to Git Status. It tells us that there's one untracked file. So to explain what this means, I'm going to kind of lay out how Git views files. And there's actually there's a couple ways, and I'm going to explain um, what all this means in a bit. So there's untracked files. <coughs> modified files yeah. stage files and committed files with one or two T's I don't know how you spell commits committed two T's uh, two T's I've got an unrelated question while you're standing by the board. What does that URL say? Because I can't get it to load. Oh, so so this is... If you have the email, just go to the LinkedIn email. Yeah, yeah. It's a... It checks to make sure some of the letters are capital too as well. So what? Some of the letters are capital? It is this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Capital Y, capital S, capital W. Ah, okay. Maybe I should have had someone else write that. So so this is the workshop webpage. And there's a link on there for, under the workshop for this week the site for this week. Got it. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. No problem. Uh, so going back here. So so git status reveals that Mars.txt is an untracked file. Uh, so it falls in here. One way to think about how Git works is like you're taking a snapshot or a picture of your work. So you can do this by having a bunch of people that are going to be in the photo. You tell them, stand over there, say cheese. That's staging them. Or if they're actors, that's putting them on the stage. And then committed is when you actually snap the photo. So there's a, there's a step in here where to go from untracked to get knowing that you want this in the in the um, and we can do we can do this 
this right now. And if we set the get status again, it tells us changes to be committed. These are called staged files. And so these are files that Git knows about, and it's ready to put in the history um, that you're keeping track of, the history that you're making. To go from, to actually snap the photo, to take the snapshot. That's the git commit command. So hopefully you're committed to this. There is some history editing, but that's not for beginners. So we've made a change. We want to keep track of it. We add it. What did you do adding again? Git add and the file name. Oh. So to go from untracked file to a staged file, or changes need to be committed. And then to actually take the snapshot, actually have this in our history, is get commits. So. Of, from here, it asks the git will pop up your text editor that you chose. Is everyone at this point where they see their text editor? I'm guessing Cody's not given face you made. Oh no, no, I'm actually way ahead of you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, forget to keep track of your history. It's probably good to say what history is made up of. Um, and so this, this is key. The uh, commit messages are what this is called. A little description of what you've done. Um, so I'm going to go the git commits. And then it asks you, it tells you to type in a message for to describe the changes you made. In this case, all I did was add a file. So start notes on Mars as a base. So uh, drawing something, but Everything's red, or everything's tracked to the favorite color. <coughs> and then when you save this and quit, it'll tell you that it made a commit. So well, when Git keeps track of the history, it's keeping track of the commits you make. So this is kind of a manual process. This isn't like Microsoft Word's um, well, I'm not sure if recent changes works like this, but it's similar to this. Or Google Documents version history, where just every change you make, you can go back to, but you just have a list of little changes to go. Here, you have a description of everything you've done, because you've made that description. Um, so it's a little more, um, it's a little more useful than the kind of version history you get with Google Docs. If we type git status, there is no files that are modified. There's no files um, actually in any of those status except committed. Uh, it tells you again about the branch and says nothing to commit, working directory clean. So that means there's nothing staged. And it knows of no modified or untracked files. A command that you know, use Probably, so git add, git commit, very common. Git status, most common. Git log is probably the next one. This will tell you the record of the, um, the record of the um, commits that you've made. So as Dracula, with that email address, I've made this commit. That's the only one git knows about. It. For comparison, actually I've compared with it a couple times. The Linux kernel, if I do git log, 
This one's by Linus Travels. This one's by Linus Travels. Has quite a bit more. And all of it goes by one line in the space and then in the description. Um, so, this is an example of a pretty mature project keeping up more detailed list of their um, commits. But this is just start. Made one change. Make more. Some ways to use git log that are kind of nice. Git one line. Compresses all this down. The commits have a special number, and even that can be abbreviated, can be summarized. And it just prints, for, for git one line, it just shows the first line. Likewise, for the code for Linux, so I do git one line, git log one line, it just shows the first line. And you can see some IP version 6 fixes, fixes some wireless driver. Um, yeah. the, the first line should be a good, should be a good description. Um, as a rule of thumb, and then find that, that as a um, more detailed change of what you made. Oh, one thing I should warn, some people get in the habit, especially coming from uh, other software like Subversion, um, fine. To, to just make the commit message like bug fix, Typo, that is useless. So, a, a software like this is re is really useful, but you have to be a little like put in a little work to get all the, the use out of it. So, let's make another change. Let's see what happens. Let's say we're going to be a little friendly to um, our associate, the Wolfman, and make a note: the two moons may be a problem for. Okay. So whatever text that you want. Save and quit. And when you type git status, you're now in the modified state, or that file is now modified. Luckily, it's the same command git add to stage it. So you have a modified file, you can. Um, Hopefully you'll modify your files quite a bit if you're doing work on them. Okay, a really useful thing is to actually see what the modifications were. Diff is a program to compare two files. Git diff runs that between the um, the modified and the and the staged or committed versions. So if we run git diff. You'll see in this kind of weird way um, what, what the changes were. This tells you the minus one, plus one, comma two. This is something about the line numbers and how many lines were affected. But this is the big part. It has a plus if you added a line, and a minus if you deleted a line. Um, so git diff tells you what, the, what is modified. You can imagine if you change a bunch of files, it's good to see actually what you just did. In case. Um, you can kind of think of the commits as being able to undo things. And it's kind of nice to be able to see what you just did since the last time you did a commit. Since the last time you saved, in a sense. So, can make a new commit with this changes. Anyone who isn't going ahead in the notes, 
want to hazard a guess what this will do? It won't do anything because you haven't added it to the staged area, right? Right. So this is a modified file, and when you do git commits, it commits whatever staged. So right now, it should give us an error that there's no changes. No changes in the stage, no changes on to commits. And it tells you what changes there were. Um, and helpfully. So that you know if we really wanted to commit this file, we have to add it first and then run git commit. So I'm going to type a, another message concerns about effects of Mars's moons on Wolfman. Okay. So this will be my second commit, my second save. In the notes, I want to stress, or from the notes, I want to stress that. Uh, where would this be? Here. But there's really a four step process here. You add or modify files or delete files or whatever you want to do. You stage the files, you commit them, and then you write a message. This is actually more steps than other version control software. Um, Although that's kind of because of the flexibilities of Git. But um, this is the pattern you get into. You make your changes, you stage them, and you commit um, with the message. So that's enough. Once you know that, you can make a, a <coughs> log of your changes. The rest of the talk will be about how to view the log and do some useful stuff with it undo mistakes you've made. Um, yeah, so this is a lot. There are some shortcuts you can use. If you do git commit dash a, that stages all the modified files before doing the commit. If you do dash m and then some text, that sets the commit message without uh, running your text editor. I'll do that just for um, just so it's easy to copy paste the commands uh, for the rest of this. But um, yeah. But if you want to do a more complicated commit message, like you see in the Linux kernel, more descriptive, um, you want to do the dash out. And one thing to think about, if you think of how often you use the undo button, well, who, who, who uses undo in your text editor? If you think about how often you want that to be useful, do you want to be able to undo the last like five minutes of your work, or do you want to only be able to undo the last couple hours? That should give you a sense of how often you need to commit. Um, so how often to run through this pattern, or use one of these, or both of those short, uh, for shortcuts. Um, so tools like Visual Studio. Um, and Eclipse and Emacs and Vim to integrate uh, with Git can help you to make this part of your work workflow very easily. Um, this, or keep in mind, when you use version control, it's useful to commit often. So, yeah, so this is another diagram, or similar to the diagram shown over there. All right, so I'm going to add another line for the mummy. And actually show a little more how you can keep track of what changes you're making. So let's say that the mummy will appreciate the lack of 
Status it's modified as before. I can do get diff to see the modifications. When I add it, and then I do get diff, there is nothing modified. Of n. So a useful. So if you do get status and realize. It actually would be good to double check that you did the right thing here um, before you commit. Get this staged. Shows you what's being staged. So this is the same look. As you can see, it just moved from the modified state to the staged state. It's changed. And I can quickly add a little note about this by using that M option. Um, wow. Actually, I want to use in quotes. Climate for mummy. Get status, there's nothing modified or untracked or staged. Get log, we saw, see all three changes, all three of which I've been made by myself. Any questions? Okay. Okay, so in the notes, there's a little exercise after all this. Which commands would save the changes in my file.txt to, to a git repository? Git commits, git commits, and then git commits, git add, git commits, or git commits. So modify my file.txt. What do you need to do to commit it? Right. Yeah, so. Hmm? Yeah. If you just did the first one, it's going to tell you there's no changes that, that are staged or no changes to commit. If you do this, this is nonsense. You never use get in it like that. Um, and this one, dash m, it, it, get commit doesn't work like that. But yeah, you're exactly right. You have to add it and commit. What if you have like two files? You um, can do git add and then both names. OK. Like just my file and then my file too. Okay, and then what about the commit? If you're doing the little short message thing, what if the message is supposed to be different for each file? Then you want to add two different commits. Okay. So you could do git add and then one of them. So let's say, I'll do an example like that. Um, where is that txt? Right, give me something with another monster. Um, uh, I guess this would be capitalized. The invisible man would not like the dust storms. Okay? So I write that. And then instead I do the 
and your advisor walks in and is like, the output of it is off by a little bit. Could you add, use commas instead of tabs or something? Can you print things out? Like some small change. You can make that small change and then get add that small change and commit that and continue working on what you are without committing it. Um, so, so Git is very flexible. You can have uh, you can be working on stuff without committing it right away. You can also commit parts of file, or sorry, you can stage parts of files and commit them using git add p or git add i. That's a little more complicated. I would Google it or read the help file how to do that. Um, but yeah. But that's a good question. Yeah. And this exercise is a little more in depth. Um, if you want to do that on your own, you run into any problems. Going back and now actually making use of your size just <coughs> making use of your um, history to see what was done. Go to the exploring history page in the notes. So when you make a commit, as that git log command showed, there's actually a list of commits. Um, the most recent one that you committed gets a label, I should use a different thing of arrow for this, gets the label pet. It also had a long number associated with it. If I did git log, so B6470A, all that, that's the name of the commit, but it's easier just to call that head. So head is your most recent commit. Um, the one before that, so presumably you've made several commits so far. The one before that is head till day one, head till day two is before that, and so on. This is just an easy way to refer to these commits. Git diff shows you what has changed since that commit. So if I do head, well, so I get, get diff alone, shows you what's in the modified files. If I compare it to head, it, the last commit, compared to that, it adds that line. If I compare it to two commits ago, it adds both these lines, and it adds this line in venus.txt. If I compare it to three commits ago, it adds these three lines, and adds that line in venus.txt. Um, I'm going to get log again. These long numbers that <coughs> every commit is labeled by, So the B670A, whatever that is, it could probably be different for each person. It should be different for each person. It's a little scary if it's not. It's bad if it's not. Like the software, like everything we know about numbers is breaking kind of bad. <laughs> um, we can take all this. Actually, let's take this one. So two commits ago, we're going to get diff that long number, and that does the same thing as head minus, head till day two. So in any, any command where it says head or head till day something, um, you can use these numbers or vice versa. So, get this lets you see what's changed since a, since a commit. Get show shows you what the commit, or so, so git show in general shows you what this 
Um, this is called hash, that long number, what that does, or what that is. Git has hashes for every commit, it has hashes for every file, every version of a file, it has hashes for every folder, um, every version of the folder. Um, Git uses a lot of hashes. So that's a long number. Because, so, so this is 40, 40 hexadecimal characters. That means there's 160 bits of information here. That means there is two to the 160 ways you can do that, have that number. Meaning you should not ever have the same number twice. That's why it's so long. Um, so that you don't get the same hash for two different things. But, Actually, a nice point is if there's only one thing that, if it's unambiguous, so if there's only one thing that the Git repository knows of that starts with 26BE0, you can just do that and get the same thing. So that's why git log shows those long, long hashes git log one line shows you these much smaller ones and actually what is this? This is 16 to the 7 um, combinations of numbers are possible. So even this, there's a lot, even with these couple bits, there's a lot of, um, it, it would take quite a while before you needed more than this to represent it. Actually, in Linux, so Linux also doesn't even need more than seven. Um, at least you need to represent the commits. But if they did have a, more than one shared the first same seven letters, then this would be longer. And you'd have to go longer to uniquely identify things. Yeah. So Git uses a 40. 40 character long hexadecimal string or 160 bit string to, or 160 bit number to um, okay, for the safety, for, for consistency. Yeah, so to show what actually happened in one of these changes, get show. With either the long or the short hashes, as long as the short is unambiguous. So, discuss concerns about Mars climate for mummy. Good show. Let's me see that the only change was that line. And the message was this. If I wanted to do git show, let's say three commits earlier, I could do git show head three. Finally, git show, git show head. So the most recent commits, I can just type that. Another way to say that, if you do git show alone, it shows your most recent commits. So adding Venus. <coughs> so this is a way to view your history in the, um, so, so git log and git show are a way to view your history through the terminal uh, without actually opening the files. So I'm going to start without actually loading the files. So I'm going to go from here to undoing changes, which is one of the useful things about version control when you're making mistakes is both to know you know what changes you've made so that you know what, broke, what potentially broke stuff. Um, and to go back to that. So, I'm going to go back to editing this file. Mars.txt. And let's say instead of, instead of adding this line for the invisible man, I 
accidentally deleted it. Okay. I can use git show or git diff to view what, what, what is now missing. So I delete everything except the line that I added. I can use git show or git diff to see what changed. But let's say I don't even want to like keep track of what the invisible man did. Screw him, lock him in a box. I'll let him out and never know. But uh, want to totally get rid of this change, this modify file. It actually <coughs> tells us nicely how to do it. Git checkout and then the file name um, to discard changes in the, in the directory you're working in. Um, the dash dash is in the notes, it just means don't treat the file as an argument, as an option. Um, so you can do that. So check out mars.txt. You can say whether you want to check out the one from another commit, whether it's by the hash, the long number, or by its head. And if you do that, it's modified and it's what it was three commits ago. If we check out the one from head, which if you're doing this, you can just do check out. Get status, because that's not. Maybe I confused it. Huh. I think it might have been done something I didn't expect because of the um, fact that I had something on the um, stage. But yeah, the form of git checkout is git checkout, um, git checkout in the commits and the file name if you're using, if you're just trying to grab a single file. Like if you get to get diff. If you do git diff now, yeah. it'll, say, it'll say nothing because git diff um, only returns the modified files, and there's nothing modified. So right now, you're in the state, or right now everything is as it was for the last commit. If I do git log, it's whatever it was at the time of this commit. You can actually do git checkout and then the commits. And so let's go add concerns about effects of Mars Moon. Git checkout that. It'll warn us that we're doing something potentially dangerous if we start committing when we're here. Um, you've gone back in time and done commits, and when you do that, you'll probably lose track of where you were if you do get log here. See, there's only two commits. This isn't quite the best way to go back. We'll talk about another way. But git, git checkout is um, a very versatile. Yeah. So hopefully no one's cleared their screen and they can do git checkout um, of the last commit that was done. Like scroll up to when they ran git log last. Another way, and I think it uh, doesn't tell us. I believe it saves you. No, it doesn't. Yeah. So if you do get check on an older one, you have to know the commit that you came from to be able to go back. And now, I'm back. So, good check out the goal. Thank you, if you don't know, um, you're way around your repository. So that, that's why I'm just saying, use it for single files unless you're doing branching, which we'll talk about next time. So, let's talk about mistakes. Okay. 
Okay, if you got a head detached, you get check out master. <coughs> uh, that was a bit of a going back in time with get checkout seems to have not been a good idea. Even though it can do that. I'll show you how to undo commits later. Like the way you're supposed to do it. Checkout's not how you're supposed to do it. But you can still go back with it. So let's say you are Wolfman. Instead of being Dracula, let's say you're Wolfman. You have some great notes on the planets to go to. Or even better, you have like um, you have detailed calculations about um, the various transfer windows and different strategies for going to the planets. Um, you guys have done in mechanics, like what, um, transfer uh, transfer windows, robo mechanics, um, that kind of stuff. Yeah, kind of exciting. The different strategies, gravity. Um, uh, slingshotting and whatnot, and you calculate all that. And you commit it. And then it happened to be a full moon. And you don't recognize your work at all in the morning. Maybe we've had nights like that. Something like that. You know? Like, what were you thinking? So, next part, how to undo mistakes. The first one, how to undo more mistakes. So the first one, the first one was using git checkout to um, get rid of changes that you haven't staged. Let's say I change this again. There are no bats to use as minions. And unlike before, I stage it. As a werewolf, I stage it. I don't know. It actually tells us in Git Setup. It actually tells us in Git Setup how to unstage it. So Git Reset is actually um, useful for this if you ever forget. Status, if you don't like git status, like what it says, it's actually kind of helpful for telling you how to change things. So git reset head mars.txt. And if you do this, it tells you that mars.txt is now a modified file. And it's now unstaged. So, you can think of this. To go backwards, git reset. So staging is important. Now let's say I actually do a commit, and I really don't like the commit. Look at the log, and keep in mind this is only deleting the, the well, uh, I'll give the caveats. Let's say I don't like Venus at all. We realize from the Wolfman's detailed calculations that we're going to have to wait 20 years to do a real field efficient burn. Um, this might be my purple space program like background talking, but uh, NASA really uses much more sophisticated slingshine effects um, and multiple passes around the planets when they find this stuff. But let's say, for the sake of argument, Venus is not only a no-go, we don't ever want anyone to know we can sit. some victims on Venus, we don't want them to know we're considering it, so we take it out of the repository. Which is probably a really bad way to organize this, because we lose all the benefits. But, say for whatever reason, you want to um, 
you don't want this commit anymore. Maybe you want to redo the commit. Maybe you want to add another file for meetings instead of what was there. So git reset also does this. If you do git reset dash dash hard, and then the commit that you want to go back to, this will change your uh, repository and your log, not give any errors about head, uh, about head being, it being confused where head should be, um, that git checkout did. It, it'll be as if you didn't have that commit. The commit is still in the repository. It takes a little more work to, be, to, make, to do this destructively. Um, But if we do this, we do git log, we've now lost the Venus commit. And if we do git status, there's no modified or untracked files, and if we do ls, there's no venus.txt. One thing that you may want to do instead, and actually, it's more likely, and this is kind of some history editing, which is a very powerful thing that Git lets you do. Whether you abuse it or not is up to you. Um, Maybe fun to fly in venus.txt. Okay? You write that, you add it, you commit it. Uh, okay? Yeah, so it added that when file change. Git log. You're single quote. I had the double explanation points, so it used the last command. <laughs> and, and it used the last command every time I had the double explanation points, which I guess was six. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a good reason why not to do dash M. I don't use dash M normally. Okay, so I was going to say that this was a very um, not up to the professional standards in the text file, and we is not a very professional standards in the commits. The actual message also <laughs> is not so well. So if you do git reset and you go back without doing dash dash hard, It'll reset things, but it'll keep the changes. So it'll reset it without changing your um, without changing the actual um, like files and folders that are on the disk um, that you're working with. So you can write something nicer in here. You know, the invisible man could look at and not feel ashamed of is working with these crazy people. Uh, got a little bit like like to test his aeronautical abilities. Yeah. Add that. Commit it. So you can go backwards um, and commit with git reset. And I have another exercise here. All right. So someone has been working on Python script for weeks. 
modification she made this morning broke the screens. I'm working on it for an hour on it. Luckily, she has been keeping track of her pro project's versions using Git. Which command will let her recover the last committed version of this data cruncher.py file? And we have a guess, or I have a guess what, what one of these lines would do. So the last one show the last modification to the, the script. Uh, Get diff would. The checkout doesn't really show anything, it modifies the file, so. The second one would. Yeah, so, so this checks out the data crunch.py from the last commit. commit was are the same thing. So yeah, answer is two and four. This one, I don't know what that would do. I don't think that would do anything. But and this one because this kind of goes back in time to the current commit your ads. So I'm not I'm not sure what this would do. But it definitely went. Um, it wouldn't change modified files. This form, uh, this form does, and this one would just grab it from the second, second to last. Okay. Going back. All right. So there's only one more concept. I know I ran a little over. Um, Let's say you're doing something that has a lot of crap, and a lot of things do, if you're doing programs. This is a common thing in programming, having a lot of crap around. Mostly, if you use C or C++, you have .dot .o files laying around. If you use LaTeX, you have .dot .log, .dot .aux, .dot um, .bbl, God knows what else. Let's say you run your program, and that makes all this stuff, including, say, the program that you compile. Because you don't really care how the compiled program changes. You care how the programming code for it changes. So in general, you have all this crap. And I'm going to just make a bunch of crap. And the git status. And you see a bunch of untracked files. If this is all stuff you don't care about, Git has a way of you telling it you don't care. A dot git ignore file. So this is a little point that's just nice to know. So in my case, the crap I made was a results folder. <coughs> as well as a bunch of things that ended in dot .dat. So I'm going to use star dot .dat, where star stands for zero or more letters, like it does in the shell. And I just realized I wanted to vim by habit. But you should do it in nano if you're not familiar with vim. So when you add things to dot get ignore, um, and this is uh, particularly in late time, there's just a lot of stuff that generates. Um, this is more of a making your life kind of nicer. So you don't have a lot of stuff you don't care about when you get status. So everything that I said was crap is now gone. If I do get status ignore, I can see the list of ignored files that exist. 
since I added a file, it actually might be kind of nice to have that in the repository um, so that other people using this repository can ignore the same things. So it's kind of it's common when you work with code for the ready to be a or when you work with someone else's repository to see a doc get ignored. Um, I think I just opened a new terminal. Sorry. You see a doc get ignored uh, file. Most commonly, or is anyone here using Emacs? No? Okay. Uh, okay. You're not using Git and you're familiar with this. But in Emacs, it'll create a lot of files that are, I don't know, mars.txt tilde. It'll create backup files. So it's common to exclude those. In Vim or VI, it creates a lot of dust, something, dust swap as the temporary files. These are just if the thing crashes or your computer crashes, it has a temporary file. That's a common thing you put in document ignore. So and this is actually a good demonstration. The same file can be modified and have parts of it staged. Get diff. The modified parts are those two lines. The staged part are the first two lines. Yeah. So that's my little thing about. I think that's all that there is here. Yeah. That's my little, this is nice and convenient.